first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. All right, all right. He might seem to be happy, but soon he won't be. What we getting ready to get into tonight is missing persons, human trafficking, and sex slaves or sex prisoners. Um, there's been a large topic. I remember um, hearing about this as a child, and it got more in depth. Well, I got more in depth in it when I went to college. Um, when I became a sociologist, and I also was majoring at one time in psychiatry or psychology. Um, dealing with aspects of the mind. And that's what we want to really get into because that's what all of this really boils down to is mental. Mental addictions, mentalism, in which that deals with beyond the reptilian portion of the brain. Um, the cases of satanic sacrifices or human sacrifices from all around the world. And basically, it's contrary to the opinions of um, the police departments in the United States, the U.K., or Belgium, or anywhere else, anywhere else in the world, um, that human sacrifice in the satanic ritual is no myth, neither is satanic ritual abuse. Um, I remember in my third year of college, we had a guy, actually he was a police officer, um, a detective, and he came to... Federal State University, FSU, and we went to go see him, and he was telling us about all of this. He was telling us that this goes high up in the government and worldwide, globally. You know, the trafficking of um, young children, you know, um, for sexual um, enslavement. All right? For example... It is said that um that a lot of this takes place during the satanic calendar ritual days. For example, um statistics on missing persons in the United States are difficult to find but are appalling. All right, it has been estimated from the um Cal Fletcherman Foundation that twenty three hundred American people are reported missing on a daily basis. And that human trafficking is very real and huge activities worldwide. Now, 
among others, um, uses traffic people or a pool of victims from select or selection for occult human sacrifice. Um, Mary Ann um, estimates that tens of thousands of sacrifices routinely occur worldwide on the date on the calendar of the Santana calendar. Um, the best advice to the public is to know where your pets and your children are at all times. It is estimated that in 2010, over 1 million missing persons would be registered with law enforcement agencies, and that 800, more than 800,000 was registered in 2007. It says 90% of missing persons um, do return home. However, a total of 10% or 100,000 do not. As of um, December the 1st, 2007, only 100,522 um, missing persons um, cases were considered active. Um, in 2007, only 15% of the missing person cases registered were classified as local by the um, National Crime Information Center. And it says that 52% of the active cases were juvenile. 11% was considered young adults um, between the ages of 18 to 20. 55% of the missing adults were men. 40% of them were white. 30% of them African-American. 20% of them Latino. And only in October of 2001 were adults um, made inclusive of the National Missing Children Organization um, National Clearinghouse Data Bank or database for um, the missing persons. This was called the Kristen Law, um, which Kristen was also a Charlotte, North Carolina registered um, native like Cal. Now, this is what is going on. This is what is being said in this particular article. Now, when you do some more missing um, statistics for missing children, it says that um, at the last support most true believers um, use in some variety or variation of the idea that the SRA conspiracy explains the total of social accepted ideas signifies here with the example of the common hell assumption that there are thousands of missing children each year. Now, it says the SRA conspiracy theory accounts for this phenomena, the children are sacrificing satanic rituals. Dr. Al um, Charles estimates that 40,000 to 60,000 people are killed in satanic rituals yearly. All right? Other true believers cite smaller numbers, but still in the tens of thousands. Yet, when statistical studies are done concerning missing children, we find the truth does not fit the SRA conspiracy model. In fact, the vast majority of children reported missing each year are accounted for within a 12-month period, even fewer than 300 uncounted um, for um, after a year. Now, the majority of the missing children either are taken by non-custodial parents in custody disputes or, or runaways. At least that's what is being said. So, you know, we're trying to give you both views here. However, um, we have a lot of information which that would support that there's definitely some things going on. Um, a recent release of the Justice Department studies finds that almost all missing children are teens, runaways, or throwaways. The typical kidnapping is um, committed by a divorced parent who has lost custody. This is what they want us to believe. As for strangers abducted, um, the Washington, um, D.C.-based National Center for Missing and Exploited Children currently lists about 240 children missing in the entire country. Still, much of the American public, um, public is convinced that molesters, saddists, kidnappers, and um, pornographers are major threats to our children. All right, so this is what they are saying, but we're going to see um, before this lecture is over or before this show is over, um, especially at the top of the hour, we're going to have Nancy Richardson to come in um, who um, has done major research on this as a psych major um, at Appalachian State. So she's going to come in and she's going to drop a lot of information. 
and some of that at the top of the hour, but also um, we're going to go over some of these Santanic holiday dates. Now, you got to understand that these um, are not just Santanic holiday dates. They're also pagan dates, but the Satanists use these days also to perform their rituals because these are days in which their energies can be drawn forth in which that we want to see um, from the biggest secret by David Icke. He makes mention of this also. But like, for example, um, January the 17th is Santanic um, Revels, which is um, sexual, oral, anal, vaginal, uh, females between the age of 7 to 17. All right? Um, also, January the 7th is St. Wine Ball Day, which is a um, blood, which is animal and or human sacrifice and dismemberment, male if human. Um, if we go to January the 20th, 27th, um, abduction, ceremonial preparation, and holding of sacrifice to for um, child miss. Sexual and blood, oral, anal, batch sacrifice, female and children, any age. All right? Um, if you go to March the 1st, I'm um, saying... Um, Ekhetet, um, which is blood, drinking of human blood for strength, and it's any age, male or female. You have March the 20th, which is the sp- spring equinox, which is called the Sabbath Festival, which is major fertility sabbat, which deals with orgies, oral, anal, and vaginal, any um, age, male or female, human or animal. All right. Um, then you have the days of Easter, or on the eve of Easter, um, as well as also from um, Good Friday, um, in which that deals with um, blood sacrifice, um, human, um, particularly as well as male um, only, or male and female. All right. Then you have the um, April the 26th through May 1st, which is called the Grand Climax, which is called the Mir which deals with oral, anal, vaginal, and the corpus de bala, which is through age 1 through 25, female. All right? Then you have June 21st, which is festival day, summer solstice, orgies, oral, anal, vaginal, animal, and or human sacrifice, any age, male or female or animal. All right? And I'm just showing you all of this because this will begin to start correlating. June 20th through 26th deals with abduction, ceremonial preparation, and um, holding of sacrifice, um, sacrificial victims, you know, for the Grand Climax, which the Grand Climax comes on July the 27th, um, which is oral, anal, vaginal, and human sacrifice, female, child, or adult. So you always see a rash of abductions as well as also um during that time period, during those particular times. All right, we also have August the 3rd, which is Santanic, Revel, um, Sexual, Oral, Anal, Vaginal, 7 through 17. Again, September the 7th, which is the Marriage to the Beast, which correlates to September the 11th. Um, sexual Sacrifice, Dismemberment, um, Infants, um, through the age 21, female. Um, we have September the 22nd, uh, um, Festive Day for Equinox, Orgies, Oral, Anal, Vaginal, any age. October the 28th through 30th, Santanic High, Holy Day related to Halloween, blood, human sacrifice each day, any age, male or female. And of course, October the 30th, 31st, Hallow Eve and Halloween night, blood and sex, um, sexual sexual climax associated with the demons, um, animals and or human sacrifices, um, any age, male or female, or an animal. Um, November the 1st, Santanic High. Um, Holy Day related to Halloween once again, blood, human sacrifice, any age, male or female. And then November the 4th, which happened to be the day of the elections politically, is Santanic Revel, which is sexual or anal, vaginal, 7 through 17, female. December 22nd is winter solstice, um, which deals with orgies, oral, anal, and vaginal, any male or female, human or animal. And, of course, December the 24th, and going, which is Christmas Eve, you know,
know, going into um, Christmas itself, just with um, the high grand climax um, received body parts is um, Christmas gifts. It deals with um, any age, male, female, human, and or animal or infant males. So this is what is going on. Now, when you get to Chapter 15 of The Biggest Secret by David Icke, he speaks about this. He says that Satan's children. Um, now, a lot of this stuff, he's coming from, I would say, somewhat of a Christian version, um, but in some way he is, in which that the information has to be explained a little bit better, which he doesn't do. But a lot of the information which that he does say um, carries miles. So he speaks about that the black magic rituals that we know as Satanism or the modern expression of rituals and human sacrifices in ancient Babylon and the Brotherhood infiltrated societies of Samaria, um, Phoenicia, Hittites, Egyptian, Canaanite, and Akkadian people, among many others around the world. It has been a seamless procession through history of the same rituals to the same deities and thus remains of the fundamental importance to the initiates of the Brotherhood today. Now, he goes on to state that, you know, he's trying not to come from a Christian perspective. He goes on to say, um, my use of the term Satanism has nothing to do with the Christian version of Satan. I use it only to describe a system of uh, ritual sacrifice and torture, which staggering as it may seem to most people is, contem- is commonplace all over the world today. Satanism is just another name for the worship of a highly destructive negative force, which has been given endless names over the century. And he goes on to name some of these names, um, Nimrod, Baal, Moloch, or um, Set, the devil, Lucifer. Um, there is no end to them. I mean, of course, this is his perspective, and he's coming from that. Um, we're going to later on, um, maybe not this show, but probably another show in which that we um, break down this information a little, little bit deeper because we're only going to be able to reach the surface tonight because there's a lot of information in Probably we don't have the whole two hours in order to get it out. Um, I definitely know that I'm probably have more than just this um, hour. But he speaks about the Santanic Network under the names of the various ETs, which was created by the Lonian Brotherhood to serve their needs. He got to understand that these are particular thought forms. Um, and he says that we've seen the account of the Watchers and their offspring, the Nephilim, including with reference to their blood drinking activities. And the Brotherhood knows that the blood contains the um, life force energy. Drinking menstrual blood has always been a feature of the reptilian bloodline because they need blood to live in this dimension. It is known as the starfire, the female lunar essence. The female menstrual cycle is governed by the cycles of the moon, and the blood contains that energy. Its ingredients are supposed to ensure a long life. Um, In India, it was called Soma, and in Greece, it was Ambrosia. And some researchers suggest. Now, you got to understand, um, once again, um, you know, he's speaking from just the lower nature aspect, not from the higher nature aspect. Um, I'll get into that a little bit later. But he said that um, this was said to be the nectar of the gods, and it was. The reptilian gods who were genetically um, blood drinkers. The holy grail chalice of cup is also symbolic to the womb, which it is and drinking menstrual blood, as well as being a symbol of the reptilian royal bloodline itself. Menstrual blood was provided for the elite of the um, reptilian royal line by virgin priestesses, and this is the origin of the term um, scarlet woman, um, in which that Nicki Minaj dressed up as um, at the um, award show. Um, or that to the Greeks, sacred woman, the Greek word for this, um, is um, Herodule, and the English transliteration of that is harlot, and in Greek, no, in German, it is known as whores, the origin of the word whore. All right, so he goes on and do a lot of other information, which, you know, um, I won't get into here. You can go and read Chapter 15 yourself. But he does say that Satanism is based on the manipulation of energy and consciousness, which it is. Um, these deep, um, sick rituals create a energy field, a, vib- a vibratorial frequency, which connects the consciousness of the participants to the reptilians, or better yet, to your reptilian portion of your brain, the base brain, or what is known as the brainstone, and other consciousness of the lower fourth dimension. 
this is the dimensional field, also known as the lower astral, which is actually the first and second overtone of the astral plane, to many people who resonate to the frequency of low vibratory emotions like fear, guilt, hate, and so on. When a ritual focuses these energies, as Satanism does, a powerful connection is made with the lower fourth dimension, the reptilians or demonic spirits, as we also refer to them as. And these are some of the demons which these rituals have been designed to summon since the whole sad story begins thousands of years ago. This is when so much possession takes place and the reptilians take over the initiate's physical body, or what is called mountain them. Now, or um, the witch riding your back, as it is also called. Now, it says the leading Satan is all full-blooded reptilians clothed in a human form. These rituals invariably takes place on vortex points, and so the terror, horror, and hatred created by them enters the global energy grid and affects the earth magnetic field. Thought forms of that scale of um, marvelous um, holds down the vibratory frequency and affects human thought and emotions. Now go to a place where Satanistic rituals take place and feel um, the fear in the atmosphere. What we call atmosphere is the vibratory field and how it has been affected by human thought forms. Thus we um, talk about a happy light or loving atmosphere or a dark or forbidding um, one. The closer the earth field is vibratorily to the lower fourth dimension, the more power the reptilians have over the um, over this world and its inhabitants. Right? Satanism is not just a sickness or a perversion. Also, it, um, it is although it is also the main reason for existence from the brotherhood point of view is to control the earth magnetic field, to worship and connect with their reptilian masters, to drink the life force energy of their sacrificed victims, and to provide energy for the reptilians who appear to feed off human emotions, especially fear. These sacrifices are literally sacrifices to the God, the reptilians, and they have been happening for thousands of years. The mass sacrifice of um, people um, by the Aztec and Central Americans and so many others were to provide food for the physical reptilians and crossbreeds who eat the bodies and drink the blood and energy nurturement for the non-physical reptilians on the lower um, fourth dimension. Now, um, we got to understand the real science behind what is going on here, is that when you deal with that aspect, if you are dealing with the lower um, nature or the lower mind or the lower self, all right, now, the opposite of those who do the blood rituals, sacrifices, animal or human, or um, do the sexual orgies um, based off the lust, and those who do it, um, tantra kriya yoga or biosexology, and do qigong and tai chi, is totally opposite because there is no animal sacrifice or human sacrifice involved. We understand that the same energy in which that formed the human body in existence is the same energy in which that is throughout the boundless universe in which that you, especially as a melanated being, can absorb and store within the three areas in your body core, your dantians. One in particular, your lower dantian, which is near your navel area, your heart, particularly the back of your heart, and your third eye area. These are the three storage places in order to rejuvenate your body on a daily basis without having to drink blood, animal or human. It's not necessary. However, um, when you're dealing with individuals um, who lack melanin, this might become necessary. Now, how we know because we got the world so-called famous Satanist, um, Alistair Crawley, who had connections also with both um, Winston Churchill and the Nazis, Adolf Hitler, who advocated human sacrifice and admitted to sacrificing children. In his book, um, 1929, Magic in Theory and Practice, he explains the reason for ritual death and why small boys are the best victims. It was the theory of the ancient magicians that any living being is a storehouse of energy, varying in quantity according to size and health of the animal and in quality according to the mental and moral character. At the death of this animal, this energy is liberated, is liberated suddenly from the highest spiritual workings, one must accordingly choose the victim, which contains the greatest and purest force. A male 
soul child of this perfect innocence and high intelligence is the most satisfactory and suitable victim. All right? He goes on in notes um, or add in his footnotes that according to the record of the Satanists, um, Fetter, um, Karu, Rabo, he performed just such a sacrifice 150 times every year between 1912 and 1928. Now, think about it. That means that this one man ritually sacrificed almost 2,500 young boys in that period alone. Right? Now, we can't say, um, you know, we weren't there. I can't say that I was there. But this is according to the writings. Now, what we don't, what many of y'all might not know, of course, he proclaimed himself to be the B666, which, of course, 666 is nothing more than six protons, six neutrons, six electrons, which is your um, carbon um, made up body, which, i.e., melanin. But Alistair Crowley was also a 33rd and a 97th degree Freemason, as well as um, one of the um, high priests in the Golden Dawn, and was recognized as the master Satanist of the 20th century. All right? Um, he ate the feces of women doing bizarre sexual acts involving Luciferian worship and Satanism. At least that's what it said. Now, according to the shocking documentary um, film title, In Search of the Great Beast, directed by Robert um, Gaffro on follow, um, which was, I think it was produced by Lynn um, Bissell in 2007, they state specifically that Barbara Bush, the wife of um, President George H. Bush, or Herbert Bush, is the daughter of the world most infamous Satanist, which is Alice Crawley. Now, for those who've been researching and studying this, um, I think Phil Valentine came out with it um, soon afterwards, was that he um, stated the same thing. I can't remember the name of the tape right now, but he dropped it on the information, also on that information. Now, I remember while I was in college, it was a newspaper article in the um, Washington Times, and they actually got um, news throughout the nation. But um, it was Thursday, June 29, 1989, and it speaks about a homosexual prostitution inquiry and snares um, VIPs with Reagan and Bush. Call boys take midnight tours of, what, of the White House, a White House. And um, it was written by Paul um, Rodriguez and George Archibald um, of the Washington um, Times. And it goes on that a homosexual prostitution ring is under investigation by federal and district um, authorized, um, authorities and includes among its client key officials of the Reagan and Bush administration, military officers, congressional aides, and United States and foreign businessmen with close social ties to Washington political elite. Um, documents obtained by the Washington Times reveal. All right, so um, you go and find that article. Just put it in, um, key search um, into your um, Google, and pull it up. All right, it goes on to say how Larry Flynn, you know, who did the penthouse joint, I think it was penthouse or whatever, Hustlers Magazine, whatever it was, that um, he was the one in which that, um, help orchestrate that for the government. Okay? So do you still wonder what happens to many of the um, millions, yet millions of children who go missing every year all over the world, never to be heard um, of again? Because this is not just nationally, this is internationally. You know? Now, um, Something else that David Icke said in his biggest secret book in which that um, brings some things to light, he says that Satanism is at its core about the manipulation and the death of another person's energy and consciousness. In olden times, they called it soul snatching. It may appear to be merely a sick and perversion, but those who truly understand the background of the ritual knows on what really matters is the effect of the ritual, not so much the ritualists um, themselves. All right, they are the means to an end, stealing or manipulating energy. Sex is so common in Santana.
satanic ritual is because of the moment of orgasm, the body explodes with energy, which the Satanists or the reptilians or the reptiles can capture and absorb. All right? This is because they don't have a well-developed emotional body. All right? Um, if you um, continue reading, in, I guess, in um, The Biggest Secret by David Icke, he states that a woman by the name of um, Arizona Wild- Weldon, or Wilden, she states that these reptilians are not very psychic because they don't have a highly developed emotional body. All right? In order to be psychic, you must have the, a well-developed um, astral or emotional body. So he goes on to say that sexual activity inspired by low resonance to a much higher frequency or vibration and therefore cannot be accessed by the reptilians. All right? So any sexual activity that is inspired by love, it can't be accessed by them. So hence, the signs of tension create yoga. All right? And dial sexology. Sex doing satanic rituals or sacrifice have explodes the orgasmic energy at the very low frequency because of the intent involved, and so the energy of satanic sex resonates to the reptilian frequency or the demonic frequencies. All right, so the astrological energies um, constantly generated by the movement of the planets and the cycles of the sun and moon are also employed to add to the power of the ritual. All right, and we've seen um, a ritual here recently in which that just been blatant, you know, and I won't go into it so much as far as breaking it down, but we've seen with, our, um, with the queen of um, pop, you know, Whitney Houston, you know, um, that is said to have been a, um Illuminati sacrifice. Now, Bobby Brown's sister came onto the news and she stated that she do not believe that Whitney um, took the pills that they were trying to allude to, nor killed herself. In other words, she did not die of... um of somewhat natural causes, or in the case you do not believe that, it was accidental causes involved, all right? And she said she won't go much into the explanation of it. However, Nancy Grace, on her TV show, she specifically stated that she wanted to know who um, pushed Whitney down into the water. This is what she said. She wanted to know who pushed Whitney Houston down into the bathtub. Now, you know that less than 24 hours beforehand, um, her daughter, Bobby Christie, um, almost died the exact same way, in the exact same tub. All right? And amazingly, that was the night in which that Clyde Davis um, was on the Pierce Morgan show with the individual who who also had... um, a, um, Illuminati blood sacrifice within her family, according to um, Brother Black Dot, as well as also to Professor Griff, um, Jennifer Hudson, who had her mother, brother, and nephew sacrificed. And here Clyde David is on the Pierce Morgan show, who took over for Larry King um, with her, and they are questioning if she has the range or the ability in order to have beat Whitney Houston at her peak. That's what Pierce Morgan said. And um, Jennifer Hudson was shaking her head like, no, he didn't. No, he didn't go there. And she was saying, yeah, I got it. You know, basically she was saying, yes, I got the ability, you know, but, you know, you didn't need to go there, you know, in that manner. And you go back and watch this. This is on YouTube. You know, and this is no um, coincidence here, you know, that other people on Arista, um, Epic, RCA, Sony, in which that Clyde Davis were all involved in, um, died under mysterious circumstances. You know, this is no coincidence. You know, um, so when you look at this, and, and if I'm not mistaken, I could have sworn that they also were saying that she's going to play Whitney Houston role in Bodyguard Part 2. So it's like she was chosen to 
take the place of Whitney Houston. You know, so this is what we're talking about. This this is the sacrifices in which that goes on, especially when you um, attempt to, um, when you sell your soul to a demonic industry. And if you don't believe me, go and watch um, Shaka Khan. She speaks specifically about how the industry is demonic and how it steals your essence, your soul, and how it will sacrifice you at a drop of a dime. She said all of this on the Pierce Morgan show herself. Why do you think Bobby Christie, who is the daughter of Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown, is running scared? Because not only was she about to be um, drowned as part of the ritual 24 hours before, but she's still running for her life now. And even the family states that um, that they are scared. Why are they scared? What is going on? There's something that we don't know. We see Whitney Houston um, um, interrupt a interview that was getting ready to go on um, on E! Entertainment with Clyde Davis on there with Brandy and Monica, in which that she goes and she doing this kissing on Clyde Davis and she kissed Monica and then, you know, she hands Brandy a note. And Brandy gets on TV and she states that she's not going to say what the note stated. She's not going to um, speak about what the note entailed. I mean, these are a lot of things in which that um, can be part of this um, same thing here. I mean, we know, like, for example, um, that this is real, you know. Um, if we go in, go in history, you know, I mean, Benjamin Franklin is said to have had at least 10 um you know, 10 bodies underneath his home, his former home in London. You know, dated during the time when he lived. You know, and he's supposed to be, um, a Christ, you know, on the pillar of the Christian church and the founding father of the United States, you know. But he's part of this um, Santanic Hellfire Club, and the bodies of six children and four adults was found underneath his home. And this is historical. You can look this up on the um on the internet. All right? Benjamin Franklin might not possibly have been his name. There's others in which that state that his name was Richard. But that's another story. You can actually you find that information um from um Dr. Ali Muhammad. He speaks about it. But when you look at this there's a lot of information in which that needs to be um, investigated into. Like a research was actually done in ritualistic abuse at the University of um, Colorado at Boulder, in which they found that all of those questions have been subject to, that all their subjects have been subject, um, that they questioned was subject to intercourse or molestation. They said that 97 saw took part in animal sacrifice, that 97 percent forced to take part in sex with adults, 97 experienced torture, 94 was sodomized, 88 percent was forced to watch or take place or take part in human sacrifice, and 88 percent in cannibalism. I mean, these statistics are staggering. Staggering. Okay? Now, um, in almost every case of human trafficking for um, child sex slavery, from Chile to Australia to um, Bosnia to Portugal to Belgium to the United States, court proceedings get shut down or divert or diverted um, when a, um, a clear connection to the elite arises. All right, and that was part of the, what we were just finished talking about. You know about the elite. In Washington, how that ran up on them with this homosexual prostitution ring in 1989 during the um, Reagan and the um, Bush administration. All the way up into the White House, nothing happened. Nobody was prosecuted. Then there's a shocking study of 12% of children sexually abused in government custody. And this is from Daniel um, Tensor. 
raw story in which that is dated on February, no, January the 8th, 2010. It says some 12% of minors held in government custody are sexually abused, and in some facilities, the rate reaches a stunning one in three children, said a report released Thursday by the Bureau of Justice Statistics. The first ever national um, survey of youth in custody found that no less than 10% of the 26,550 juveniles being held in detention facilities in the United States are abused by staff at the facility, while another 2.6 report um, abuse at the hands of other inmates. Now, you know that this basically is the same in jail. Among those facilities studied, where six identified by the rate of sexual abuse as high as 3 in 10, according to the um, Associated Press, those facilities are Pendleton um, Juvenile Correction Facility in Indiana, Corsi, Siena, um Residential Treatment Center in Texas, the Backbone um, Mountain um, Youth uh, Center in Swanton, Maryland, you know, the Backbone Mountain. Now, you know, that sounds like Brokeback Mountain, you know. Then you had the um, Termakin, um Youth Development Center in Eagle Springs, North Carolina. The Crescent Secure Treatment Unit in Pennsylvania. And the um, Culpepper Juvenile Correction Center in Long Term in Michelle, Virginia. The widespread sexual abuse of the children in juvenile facilities shows that the public officials either aren't paying attention or can't be bothered to do the right thing. So this is what is going on. Another study was done in 2003. Um, the National Prison Rape Elimination Act, which was created by the National Prison Rape and, um, um, Commission, Human Rights Watch, notes that six months ago that the, um, during that time period in 2003, that the study done by the um, Justice Department had yet to act on those recommendations. So they didn't even act on what they found. This is what we're talking about here. This is exactly what we're talking about. You know? There's another article that says, um, this is by U.S. News, that the Pentagon said lack on child porn probe. January the 5th, 2011, in which that United States Senator said that the Pentagon should have paid more attention to employees downloading child um, pornography on their work and home computers. Senator Charles Grassley, represent, um, Republican of Iowa, told the Boston Globe he was informed that the Pentagon investigators failed to check all the names on a list of 5,200 employees suspected of viewing child pornography. 5,200 employees? God damn. He said 1,700 names on the list were not reviewed, the Globe reported Wednesday. And this was just last year, y'all. This was last year, but it said download child pornography is a Federal crime, punishable by prison sentences of 5 to 20 years. But nothing happened. Wasn't some 1,700 wasn't even reviewed. Amazing. Amazing. Did you get Brother Dale Jones, Alay Salam, rest in peace. If you get his book, Sex Prisoners, he breaks down a lot of this information um, in the, especially in the industry. All right, Brother Dell Jones, as a matter of fact, stayed um, at my house, um, you know, with us, you know, my wife and I, and we talked about a lot of these things that was going on in current events. He was known as um, the author of the African Holocaust, you know, and he dealt with um, being, the, um, being the man as far as getting information out. You know, as far as news reports and current events, he's one of the best at that. You know, there's also another article in which that it says the overview of Satanism and ritualized 
Child Abuse by Stephen L. Glass, and that's from the Department of Criminal Justice, Southwest Texas State University. This is why we're going to get um, the Appalachian State um, University information on the statistics at the top of the hour here. It says there's an apparent growing incidence of occultic crimes against persons in the United States. Included in these crimes are incidences of ritualized child abuse, which encompass both physical, mental, and sexual aspects of their victims. Though in certain criminal investigations, they are not identified as being occultic in nature. Nevertheless, they are occurring, occurring with alarming regularity. He says this paper will explore certain definitions of ritualized children or child um, sexual abuse, such or some background and history of witchcraft and Satanism to include early manifestations of child abuse. It will look at the characteristics and the motive, motivation of the predators. It will review some of the research studies in the area, and it will propose some approach to um, ameliorating the problem. All right? He goes on to say that witchcraft and Satanism can be traced far back as the 3rd century A.D. with paganism predating that as far as um, accurate records are kept in the 15th century um, France, Gullies de Riaz, known as the protector of Joan the Ark, engaged in Satanism and he was suspected all right, of, um, of ritualized child abuse and all types of um, demonic possession. Now, this is just some of these articles. You have the Huffington Post by Alex, Alexer, Alexander um, Etchler. It was posted on February the 28th, 2012. And this is an important article because it speaks to those in higher position and them being psychopaths. We did a whole show on the psychopathic tendencies of not just police who believe that they have authority over people, but also um, others, such as um, elites within the political arena and the global arena. Well, the following article speaks to Wall Street mental health, um, Wall Street psychopaths, mental illness, mental um, pathology, um, psych, um, psychopaths, stockbrokers, stock traders, Wall Street, mental health, business news, etc. And it goes on to state that um, that Christian Bell, as Patrick Bateman, a Wall Street investor, banker, and psychopath, researchers believe that as many as 10% of people in the finance industry may exhibit the trait of clinical psychopathy. One out of every 10 Wall Street employees is likely a clinical psychopath, right, Sherry? Um, they chose me. This is what it said. It says that a financial um, psychopath can represent it as a um, perfect, well-rounded job candidate, CEO, manager, co-worker, team member, because their destructive characteristics are practical, practically invisible. And she goes on to write, who pulls together research from various um, psychologies from her, um, for her story which helpfully suggests that the financial firms carefully screen out extreme psychopaths and high end. It, this is what they claim, but somehow the 10% sneaks in. And this would make sense due to the fact that if you go back and watch um, the protesters on Wall Street, especially in New York, where Wall Street is located at, and you'll find that Wall Street gave the New York Police Department $4.1 million in order to arrest the protesters, all right, who was doing nothing, who was homeless. And yet you would see the Wall Street people actually sipping champagne and wine and clicking glass as um, the abuse was taking place, the police brutality was taking place. Psychopaths. This is psychopath, all right? It says that a clinical psychopath is brilliant, bright, charming. He lies easily and often. It 
may have trouble feeling empathy for other people. He's probably also more willing to take dangerous risks, either because he doesn't understand the consequences or simply because he doesn't care. Now, this is just, and you got to understand that you're still dealing with the same psychopath in all of these fields in which that we're talking about in every way, okay, in everything that we're talking about. This is what is going on. You know, we're going to go to the phone line. Let's see who's on. Area code 828, you're on the line. Hey, Dr. Bay, this is me, Nancy. <laughs> hey, be ready, be ready. That's what I'm talking Are you about. ready? You ready? Oh, did you prep them? Do they know? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, be here. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay, my name is Nancy Richardson, and I did two research studies. I'm an undergrad student at Western Carolina University, and I did two research studies, one on the scope of human trafficking um, globally and nationally, and one on uh, mentally ill persons who are in jail and prison. Um, So first I'm going to talk about um, the human trafficking for a little while. And um, first I'm just going to give you the definition of human trafficking, which is said to be defined as um, both sex trafficking and labor trafficking and is the second largest and fastest growing criminal industry in the world. Um, in you said uh, in second, 2008, huh? You said it's the second largest. Right. Gun, uh, guns, and fire, uh, guns and firearms, illegal guns and firearms, and illicit drugs are number one. Number one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. What else? Yeah, trafficking is the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of persons by the threat or use of kidnapping, forced fraud, deception, or coercion, or by the giving or receiving of unlawful payments or benefits to achieve the consent of a person having control over another person and for the purpose of sexual exploitation or forced labor. And um just going to go through some facts um, dealing with sex trafficking that I found. Um, this is from taken from the Advocacy for Human Rights, where it talks that um, human, human trafficking includes both sex trafficking and labor trafficking. And, of course, like I said, it's the second largest and fastest growing um, criminal industry in the world. And in 2008, traffickers made $31 billion by sell by buying and selling humans. Um, the International Labor Organization estimates that there are at least 12.3 million adults and children in forced labor, bonded labor, and commercial sex servitude at any given time. Um, Of these victims, the International Labor Organization estimates that at least 1.39 million are victims of commercial sexual servitude, both transnational and within countries. Um, According to the International Labor Organization, 56% of all forced labor victims are women and girls. And um, sex trafficking and prostitution is one form of human trafficking, but is not limited to cases involving um, foreign nationals, but includes U.S. citizens and legal permanent residents, forced fraud or coercion, but includes cases involving a variety of means of recruitment and enticement, uh, transportation or movement across a border, but may occur within a city, county, state, or country. Um, sexual exploitation, but may overlap or intersect with human smuggling or labor trafficking cases. Sex trafficking and prostitution are part of the same continuum of criminal activity that is the sexual exploitation of women and women and girls. And the next part was taken from like a scope uh, within Minnesota. <clears throat> which the Office of Justice Programs of the Minnesota Department of Public Safety complies um, <clears throat> of, of surveying, which in 2006, 43% of service providers reported serving at least one trafficked person, while 21% were unsure as to whether they had served a trafficked person. And in 2007, about half, which is uh, 47% of service providers reported working with only U.S. citizens who had been trafficked into sexual exploitation 
from within the state of Minnesota as well as from other states such as Wisconsin and California. In 2007, they also, um, also seven service providers had worked with 342 Native women who were trafficked. Over a three-year period ending in 2008, service providers identified 731 sex trafficking victims and 93 labor trafficking victims. And according to one service provider, 8,000 to 12,000 people are estimated to be involved in in prostitution slash sex trafficking in Minnesota every day. And um, in North Minneapolis Research Project um, on prostitution and sex trafficking, 56% of people involved had their first experience in prostitution, um, sex trafficking as a juvenile, which is basically under the age of 18. Um, similar studies have been done where they found similar figures in Chicago, which had 62%, and San Francisco, who had 78%. Um, the average age of a girl's entry into prostitution and sex trafficking is 12 to 14 years. And <clears throat> also found some statistics done by the Department of Justice, where they reported in 2008 there were 488 suspects in 527 victims, more than half, which were 62% of the confirmed labor trafficking victims were um, of age 25 or older, compared to 13% of confirmed sex trafficking victims. Um, <clears throat> the confirmed sex trafficking victims were more likely to be white, which made 26%, or black, which made up 40% compared to labor trafficking victims who were more likely to be Hispanic, which made up 63%, and Asian, which made up 17%. Four-fifths of victims, which is 83%, is confirmed sex trafficking incidents were identified about U.S. citizens, were identified as U.S. citizens, excuse me, while most confirmed labor trafficking victims were identified as undocumented aliens, which made up 67%, or qualified aliens, which were um, 28%. Most confirmed human trafficking suspects were males, 80, which made up 81%, and more than half, 62% of confirmed sex trafficking suspects were identified as black, while labor suspects identified as Hispanic, which made up 48 um, percent. Human trafficking is not just a problem in other countries. Cases or <clears throat> cases of human trafficking have been reported in all 50 states. Um, it is also affecting um, our school systems in the United States because trafficking can involve school-aged children, particularly those not living with their parents, you know, because they're more vulnerable to be coerced um, into labor exploitation, domestic servitude, or commercial sexual exploitation. Those who recruit minors into prostitution um, violate federal anti-trafficking laws, even if there is no coercion or movement across state lines. The children at risk are not just high school students, but studies have demonstrated that pimps prey on victims as young as... Um, <clears throat> as young as 12, 12 years old. Hello? Hello? Oh, yeah, we here. Okay, okay. Okay, you were saying. We okay. just let you get it all in before we start going to the questions. We, we, got, oh, okay. we got statistics because in the chat room, um, they don't believe the statistics. They wonder where the statistics were coming from that I was expounding on, as well as also um, now they can't say because I did give my statistics on where I was getting them from, the articles from out the um, newspaper, um, mm -hmm. as well as also you are giving your statistics. You know, so I'm just, you know, letting them get a comparative on what I stated in the first half and what you stated in the second hour. Okay. Okay, so I will continue. Um, North Carolina has been ranked in the top eight most common sites for human trafficking, mostly for high-speed highways. Now, hold on. We got to hold it right. That's amazing. North Carolina is 48 in education, but eighth in human trafficking. Yeah, because... Um, <laughs> and they will wonder why 
um, we have a problem with the police brutality or anything else in which that is going on in the state of North Carolina. Amazing. Right. And the reasons that they stated that it was eight because um, we have I-85 and I-95, and Charlotte has been noted by the FBI as a frequent sex trafficking hub. And so um, most people, I'm not going to say, but Mexicans, um, you know, have been caught doing the drug um, cartel and um, trafficking underage girls. And then we have the agriculture which is really big by, you know, uh, construction companies bringing over um, illegal Mexicans who are also um, using um, underage um, underage people for labor as well. So that's why I said that North Carolina ranked eighth out of the ten states mostly because of the agriculture and because of the um, the highways, which, you know, you can take from New York to Virginia to, so it's basically the middle point where they stop. At. Right. So so what we've been able to um, come to the conclusion of is that the children or missing persons are being used um, as labor, as you said, child labor. Right. Um, right. They have also right. been used as sex slaves or sex prisoners. Mm-hmm. And we even stated in the first hour that they're even being used as ritualized um, 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 sacrifices um, or either child abuse um, in regards to the um, particular, um, I guess you could say, uh, cross-country um, violations of, of, RICO, of the RICO Act. Because any time that you take a child against the will without the consent, of course, state lines or county lines, that's actually just what we got. Like kidnapping, you know, as well right. as many other things, slavery, kidnapping, you know, um, extortion, mm-hmm. you know, oppression. So um, definitely right. continue on. Okay. Um, <clears throat> since we're trying to get to questions, I'm going to move on to the um second research study I did, which was on uh, mentally ill persons and the overcrowding of uh, prisons. And in 2004-2005, I found that in the United States, there are more than three times more seriously mentally ill persons in jails and prisons than in hospitals. In 1955, there was one psychiatric bed for every 300 Americans. By 2005, there was one psychiatric bed for every 3,000 Americans, which the majority of the existing beds were filled with court-ordered, meaning uh, forensic cases and not forensic cases or um, for those who were uh, civilly committed. Um, <clears throat> this is talking about uh, given the evidence for the decreasing availability of psychiatric beds for individuals with serious mental illnesses and evidence for an increasing number of such individuals with serious mental illnesses and evidence for an increasing number of such individuals being incarcerated in local jails and prisons. The question I ask, what are the odds of a person with the serious mental illness being in a jail or prison compared to a psychiatric hospital. Um, Data on the number of inpatients in public psychiatric hospitals, private psychiatric hospitals, and the psychiatric units of general hospitals were obtained uh, from the 2004 inventory of mental health organization carried out by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration under the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The number of inpatients was obtained the first day of the hospital reporting um, from January 1st or July 1st, where, um, in addition, the number of beds, um, including the survey, includes all the forensic psychiatric beds, which are occupied by seriously mentally ill individuals who have been court-ordered to the hospitals. These also include individuals who were found incompetent to stand trial, found not guilty by reason of insanity, 
sexually violent predators, etc. Uh, in 2004, in the United States, there were 100,439 psychiatric beds available in public and private psychiatric hospitals. And in the psychiatric units of general hospitals, since the population of the country was just over 300 million at that time, that means there were approximately one psychiatric bed for treatment in 1995 than in 2004. Um, <clears throat> where I went on to the statistical test, um, I found there was a very strong correlation between those states that have more mentally ill persons in jails and prisons and those states that are spending less money on mental health services. Among the 10 states most likely to be using hospitals, six were also among the 10 states spending the most money per capita. Almost also among the 10 states most likely to have mentally ill individuals in jails and prisons, five were also among the states spending the least money per capita. Um, <clears throat> The problem associated with having seriously mentally ill persons in jail and prisons. Um, in jail, the in jail the prisons, uh, repeat offenders are com commonly referred to as frequent flyers. Um, example is in the L.A. County Jail, 90% of mentally ill inmates are repeat offenders, with 31% having been incarcerated 10 or more times. Houston's Harris County Jail in 2008 included two mentally ill individuals who had been booked 30 times since 1999 and 45 times since 2001. Also included was a 33-year-old woman diagnosed with schizophrenia, which is a complex mental disorder that makes it difficult to tell, like, the difference between um, real and unreal experiences. Um, anyway, uh, she had been charged with um, 12 felonies and 31 misdemeanors. At the Palm Beach County Jail, a male <clears throat> was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder and was booked 49 times in 40 months between March 2006 and July 2009. The record for repeat offenders probably <clears throat> belongs to a woman who I found had um, been arrested 259 times in Memphis, Tennessee. Only then, after that 259th time, was was she uh, committed to a state psychiatric hospital? Now, now that's that's amazing because when we looked at the American Psycho that um, Christian Bow played in um, as the lead character, this new article that just came out said that some psychiatrists um, or so, and actually. Um, psychologists long claim that the qualities that make for a high achieving politician or stockbroker you know what I'm are also the same traits that psychopaths have in abundance. You know what I'm saying? So they're focusing on those who are at the um who are at you know, blue collar level or either at the um, you know, street level, you know mm -hmm. who they targeting. But when it comes to those in the white collar um, areas and those crimes in which that is, um, are um, committed, oftentimes there's nothing done, and there's no statistics on them being psychopaths. But yet this new article states that it is in abundance within um, high-achieving politicians, you know, because they have a tendency of being able to scratch their way up to the top, you know, in any um, type of um, environment. And oftentimes they are perfectly demonically possessed according to um, research also done. You know, so these are the individuals um, that we have to um, um, contend with on a daily basis. Right, right. There was a, a, a segment done by Dateline maybe a year or two ago uh, where they talked about how they had psychologists and psychiatrists on their Speaking of uh, these certain psychopaths who they thought or claimed to be possessed by demons, and some of them would take their patients and would even try to find uh, Catholic priests who did exorcists to rid them of these so-called demons. So, <laughs> um, I will yeah, be back. I'm sorry. Uh huh. 
I said, how well did that go? I I don't think I don't think that went very well because um, <clears throat> I was watching another video which showed I think it's called Sexual Predators Among Us that ABC did um, a couple of years back and it showed how they were housing. Um, Sociopaths and uh, sexual predators who had even murdered numerous of people, but yet they were giving them passes right. to go out and roam the town. Right. Well, that's because they're part of these satanic cults. And like we said, we're not talking about Satanism in the sense of, um, but we're talking about it in the sense of what the Christians refer to them as, but we're right. talking about those who are soul snatched, they att- attempt to steal energy. Now, we right. go back. The um, Ringo News, um, Corey Feldman, who was an actor back in the days, y'all might, you know, some some might be remember him. And um, there was another actor, um, and they both was on um, TV, and they were saying how pedophiles in Hollywood is abundant, especially those who sit at the high levels, and how they were sexually abused as children coming through the entertainment field. And we know that right. this is running rampant with also within music. You know, with the yeah. um you know, with the um Santanic verses you playing backwards or you know, or you know, and hear um certain terms and you know, and they attempt to be a cultist, but they don't never explain the information. So to me they're not a cultist, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They they are mystics, you know, because they can't explain the esoteric or the metaphysical teachings in which that they're trying to um, convey to the people through the music or either in writ, you know, and um, I have a, um, let, let's play this um, particular clip here um, before we get back to it. Hold on, let's get to that. All right. Here you see the golden arches 
And uh, I know uh, I'm not quite a middle-aged man. I'm in my uh, mid-30s, uh, early early to mid-30s. And um, I think back in McDonald's and I think of, uh, like, uh, fun times riding around the car, eating eating ice cream cones and maybe playing in the play, the play place in later days. Uh, but what I'm going to talk about now is something that I hope will make a lot of you think. Now, uh, the people that know of David Icke might already know of this theory, but it, it's somewhat new to me. Now, I'm just going to go over here some statistics in the United States. Uh, missing children every year. We got almost 800,000 missing children every year. Uh, 203,000 of uh, which uh, are children that have been abducted by family members and uh, 58,000 uh, approximately have been abducted by uh, non-family members and then 115 of which are just uh, stereotypical kidnappings. Okay, now it doesn't really uh, say what about the other 500,000 children that they don't find. You know, I'm sure some of them are runaway that are trying to, you know, start their lives or whatever as runaways, but uh, here's a theory. Uh, I heard um, this is uh, from forum, uh, forum.davidike.com, and uh, here's a Google search I did. is uh, McDonald's. Sacrifice children blood, and you got some hits of some uh, YouTube videos that have been deleted. I don't know if that's because uh, they were true or what, but I'm not going to uh, rule this out as uh, factual. And I have already uh, had stopped eating at McDonald's, and this really sickens me. But the theory is that all these missing children end up in uh, the McDonald's meat. It's pretty sick. You can... Now, some of you might think that that is crazy. However, we have an actual rabbi, a Zionist, all right, in which that basically admits the same thing. Um, the audio isn't good. We're going to try to, no to get it. And... I'm going, to basically, I'm going to have to basically, um, I guess in a sense, state what is being said because the audio isn't that well. However, it has to be um, stated so the way that this information is connected. Um, he's a Zionist rabbi, and his name is Ab, um, or Abe um, Frankenstein. All right. He basically say that... Um, that 300,000 children, 300,000 children a year, that they drink the blood and sacrifice the children. Then they um, grind, um, then they give them to restaurants like McDonald's and different other restaurants to grind up the body parts. You know, so. And he's saying that we got to do what we do. Finkelstein, that's his name, A. Finkelstein. So now you understand is that they look at us as being chattel, which is a French word which means cattle. Whenever they speak of a going, which is a Yiddish word, you know, which is oftentimes spoken um, in that manner, um, you know, they're referring to Gentiles, in which that the word Gentile is awfully reminiscent to the word um, genitals in which that someone who dwells in their lower nature and being that they claim to be the chosen ones of God, of Yahweh, or Yahivahi, then they're saying that they have the right to do whatever is done to um, these children, you know what I'm saying, as well as also to you, you know, who are the Gentiles, all right? This is what is going on. If you don't believe me, here go another one. Was that deals with the Jews selling your babies on foreskin on the on the stock market, you know, circumcision, you know what I'm saying, and how they use, um, you know, use the use the foreskin and facial anti-aging creams and different other things. As you know, they use the placenta of the human being in um, shampoos and conditioners. All right, so this is nothing. 
new. This is black market, um, and not even black market. It's public market because it's on the stock market. All right, so let's listen to this clip right here also. The kind of uh, your encyclopedia. Um, on circumcision as to why they do it, it's got a residual effect. The residual effect is to separate the boy from his father because if a child has no uh, attachment to the father, there's no level of any type of intimacy. There's no respect there. If a father can't protect you, then why do you want to have an attachment where you, you know, and this is the psychological effect because, you know, something that sensitive and that um, attached to you is raped and touched or hurt and no one protected you, not not only your mother, but your father. Yeah, I've been a little too hard on the mothers versus the fathers, but you, you had a good point there. Right, and, and so, you know, it also creates a, like a rabid dog. You know, this is the perfect place to get your soldiers from because, hey, they've been, you know, like you, you, you take a beehive and you shake it up, you really piss off the bees inside. Well, this is a great way to piss off a, a person right when they pop out of the womb when it, that's a traumatic experience anyway. And now a second traumatic experience, and you turn the child into a catatonic zombie, and then they hand it to the mother, and like, oh, look how quiet it is. Of course it's quiet. It's in shock, <laughs> post-traumatic shock. And so, you know, it goes way back. This is like, you know, that Lamb of God thing, only in this case it's the Lambda of God, because what they're doing is taking the male, making it a sacrifice, because this is what they've done. A uh, long time ago they worshipped the goddess, the Jews, and so they still do to this day. That's why you're a Jew through your mother, but it's a perverted version. And so the the goddess wants blood, and she wants male blood, so that her queer priests can have some male booty, pardon the term. And so to this day, they not only do this to your babies, but they sell your baby's parts, and so the male baby's parts. So, you know, on the stock market, and folks don't even know that the American babies' foreskins are being sold on the stock market, and every time that procedure is done, the hospitals or clinics, they pay a percentage to the companies that own the patent rights to the tools that are used, such as Gomco, um, Mogan. These are all rabbis that, that they're using their names, and some of them are incorporated. I just want everybody to pay attention to this, um, and I, I don't know anything about this. Now, I've gone on to speculate on the air that, okay, one of the other aspects of this is that you're talking about, like, this is the male progenitor of life, and you're taking something from it, uh, also an infant, and, you know, I kid, and I don't know, I'm just reaching with this, that these are actually sold and served up as a delicacy. And what you're saying is that this is on the stock market? Yeah, it's on the stock market, and folks don't even know that. It's going on every single day. They don't even realize it, and it's done uh, surreptitiously, and people don't even realize their babies are being sold as meat. Their male babies are the cattle, and it's a re religious uh, financial thing. It's, it goes on, and it's been going on for the longest time. Your babies, your male babies are cattle sacrifice, and, I, and these are some of the companies. Gom Go Gomco, you can look them up, G O M. CO, it stands for Goldstein Medical Company, there's Mogan, there's Plastibel, there's Hollister. These are the companies that provide the, the clamp that holds the baby's penis, if I can say that on the air, and, and holds it and pulls it so that the doctor can slice it. And so that clamp, they make money off of that. Then they sell the foreskin. You make up about 20000 uh, depending on the baby's ethnicity, up to upwards of 20000 to 40000 a pop, pardon the term, to other companies. And there, there was a show. Uh, now, you got to understand is that they also, the priests, um, for those according to their um, older traditions, they do not use the clamp or um, or that, you know, if you get the, um, um, the various um, Hasidium um, Jews from out of Brooklyn, um, according to their tradition, what they would do is that after the foreskin is cut, they would suck the blood off the baby's um, um, infant's penis. They would suck the blood off of it. All right? So let's continue on. Oprah show, she actually had a company on this. This woman came from the U.K., another big uh, a company, a country, a company that loves to exploit males and, of course, females because we're all connected, but they, they really – break the esteem. That's the first place a pedophile gets to the child. You break the connection with the father, the, the, the provider, protector, then you break the child's self-esteem, then you got a perfect rape, rape uh, victim. So you 
have these companies that do this to the children, and one of those companies was on the Oprah show from the U.K. actually promoting one of its products, which people didn't even know, they're so silly, that the product uses American baby foreskin, and the company, I think it was called Skimedica, and another one was uh, uh, Vavita or Vavita, it sounds like Velveeta, but it was Vavita, and they use this anti-wrinkle cream. So foreskins are used for anti-wrinkle cream, um, what they call liquid bandages. Uh, they take the collagen from it. They were using it for the biggest time in the U.S. and around the world to get interferon from, and they're still using it to this day for cosmetics. And people don't even realize that, and it's coming from America. It's like the biggest um, cattle industry or penis cattle industry around the world. That's why I call yeah. it the Lambda of God because they're, they're using it's supposed to be the Lamb of God. They're using the little babies here. Lamb's skin. Exactly. Wow, that's 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 interesting. I, I mean, I'm definitely going to look into the, the the companies you mentioned. That's that's good info. But yeah, you bring a, a really good point up. And you know, um, there was an article that came out just recently. Somebody had sent it to me because of one of my tirades on this subject, which I think is probably a lot more important than all this patriot garbage and bull crap that we're fed. Uh, the idea of you know the mutilation of of, of young children. And uh, there was a story about. This one family who was actually more, you know, had already made the naturalist decision, you know, in other words, we're not going to mutilate our child. And they told the hospital not to do it. The hospital came back and asked them whether or not they wanted it done, and they said, we told you no. Came back and asked them a third time, and they said, look, stop asking this. We don't want him circumcised. The mother, post-delivery, goes to the bathroom. They grab the baby. They circumcised him. They must have wanted that foreskin really bad. Like I said, they, it's based on the, the ethnicity. If you are, um, here's the ethnicity that are top dollar on the stock market. Um, if you are, they don't really want uh, African babies. They do want African American, I guess, because of that mix. If you're Irish, they do want the African American foreskin and babies. That mix. So, um, this is one of the reasons why that African um, Americans. Um, Moors here within the state have one of the highest um, um, mortality rates. All right? The male, the so called said black male child has one of the highest mortality rates. All right? That's that's a fact. Continue. British, they want that big time. Um, if you are, they don't really want Mediterranean because that's borderline Jew. And by the way, not all Jews are circumcised. The elitist, or what they call elite Jews, and this is, you can look this up, those who aren't considered the um, Holocaust uh, Orthodox, which would be the dumb Jew, you have the dumb Jew versus the elite Jew, they come from places like Belgium, Switzerland, Switzerland, and where you were talking about earlier, Holland or the so-called Netherlands. They don't touch their boys' penises because they're not considered slave, or, or they don't call themselves slaves. They would call them uh, potential Holocaust victims or, or the Orthodox, those who actually practice it. Now, if you talk to a Jew, listen to what they'll say. They'll say, oh, I'm not a practicing Jew. That means they consider themselves upper crust. Uh, those that are practiced, they actually believe what they're saying. It, it becomes a religious part of their lives, like a Catholic or a Catholic. They actually believe what they're being told by the rabbi or what they've read. They actually believe it. The non-practicing one is the one that considers themselves, you know, out, out of the league. And as to what you were saying with regards to... Um, the the, uh, the people not knowing what they're doing or the fact that they allow it to happen and, and that particular couple, well, I got kicked out of school for writing a paper. That's why I know so much about it. I got kicked out of high school because I wrote an, uh, a long-winded essay on I just did my research, and, of course, it was a Catholic school, but they kicked me out of school because of it. Well, I, get, I got suspended because of that paper. Because it was I racist or something? <laughs> uh, they called, well, they said it was anti-Semitic. They said it was anti-religious because, as you know, Christians believe in it, too, in, in, in circumcision. It supposedly represents your, your covenant to the God. And they don't even realize the covenant was only, if they just did a little research, they found out that the covenant was to this goddess called Hathor. And Hathor was represented by a cow or calf. And, you know, the mother, and then you would, you know, feed off the teat of the calf, but only the, the priest could feed off the teat. And the teat looks a lot like a penis. And so... That's where they get a lot of that feeding off of the teeth from. They're actually performing an act of fellatio, which is horrendously perverted, 
on an innocent soul coming into the planet. And so they suck the blood from it, and that, they call that the, the mule is the person who does it. Now, you know, it sounds like an animal to me. Why would a mule suck a cow? Plain and simple. doesn't make any sense. But this is what they're doing. This is the acts of perversion that we're allowing to go on right in front of our faces. And it's not that this is separate from so many issues. This is one of the primary causes of the issues. And folks don't want to address it. You try calling up uh, any of the news stations and, and asking them to talk about this subject and, and, and to, to talk about it openly and why is it done and primarily in America and why the AM, uh, American Medical Association allows it. It's like a disease. And recommends it. And, and, it puts out, and recommends it. Yeah, and it puts out a lot of crap as to why. Oh, it'll prevent this, it'll prevent that. I mean, it's just basically pulling stuff out of their ass. Literally. Literally. Because we're under the thumb of those same individuals and whatever that you had mentioned earlier in your program that control all this and mandate that it happens. And so, of course, they better not talk about it or touch upon it. And, of course, you have to go through the gateways, and a lot of the gateways are these news directors and talking heads, and they all are either part of that cult, if you will, or they've been brainwashed just like those same morons who take their babies to hospitals and allow the stand. Well, and, and, and part of what I was saying earlier, you know, there's also a lot of, like, innocent victims in this because, you know, Let's say you called some other show on any network, even this one, and presented this information, uh, you would not receive a favorable response because you can rely on the fact that a lot of people actually, you know, had this done to them, you know, and therefore they will defend it because they will not allow themselves to think that there might be something wrong with them or that they were had. And so even if it was such an early age, it's kind of like, you know, they'd rather be like Dorothy and go like, oh, there are five grown men in my bedroom. I must have been... Having a dream, a wonderful dream. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe if you could tell them that, okay, well, like Dorothy, if you were to, if Dorothy were in her bedroom butt naked and she says the same thing, would you believe her then? <laughs> well, the same thing, you know, with the penis. They don't get it. And I had to approach this from a biological sense, from people like you just explained. I would never probably call them on their show because they would do that. But I would say, look, this is a biological fact. The same, what they call foreskin, is the exact same type of skin that protects your teeth and gums, and that protects your eyes, and that protects the clitoris of a female. So, in other words, it's protecting an organ beneath. And when you denude an organ, it becomes calcified and deadened. And most of the people with ED or Bob Dolitis are men who have had their skin removed. So now I've got a whole other industry now, in addition to the cosmetics industry that, you know, from the purloined uh, foreskins that they've taken off of babies and sold, now you got uh, Viagra and a whole bunch of it and Sialis, uh. and, you know, because, now, hey, you need it now because, you know, your penis by the time you're 25 or 30 is now non-working or half-working because you have no foreskin. Yeah. And in the sex act, the, the foreskin is necessary because it's an actual electronic, if you will, that's the nerve endings and there's millions of them in that foreskin, and when it uh, um, enters a vaginal um, region, it actually is communicating or talking with it, if you will. I and support that. It can go, it can go slower as opposed to like a rape act, you know, and, and using lube, another uh, very, 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 very good point. Uh, hey, great call. We're at the end of the show. Uh, All right. So, as you see, um, this is definitely what's going on, and um. What we're going to do is go to the line, um, hold on with this, um, Nancy, and we're going to come right back and um, we're going to pull you on in. They might have some questions for us. Let's see. Area okay. code 09, area code um, 609. You're on the line. Peace, peace. Peace. Uh, Dr. Ali Dr. Bay, you're always bringing it to the table, man. You're always bringing it. No, yeah, um, no doubt. It, Fine, too. We're trying to get everybody aware of what is going on on planet Earth. Yeah, no doubt. It, this is some powerful stuff, man. I was just thinking, you know, um, you know, as a person that came up in the church, man, it's, we've been, like, brainwashed, man. It's like um, it, this, the interview just totally brings so much light to this whole thing about uh, the Bible saying you got to be circumcised and the whole Israelite law. And, uh, and you know, it just brings a question to the table, like, okay, if this was a covenant that was between God and the Israelites, you know, so to speak, as it says in the Bible, um, then, you know, why why would it be that, you know, God would make this covenant and say, 
your voice have to be circumcised on the eighth day. And, and if, if that's what's going to set us apart from the rest of the world, why don't you just create, create us without it? You know, why do you bring us here with the foreskin and then tell us to cut it off? You know, and it just makes no sense to me. Exactly. You know, and um, you heard um, the reason why it doesn't make any sense because the foreskin um, has an electromagnetic um, property to it in which that um, is for the nerves in which that gives forth the sensitivity um, during the sexual act. And with the cut, right. it dulls the nerves, you know. And this could account for why some of the brothers are impotent um, or have problems, you know, um, getting their penises up, you know. And yeah, it's happening, it's happening earlier now. Like, you know, you used to hear about this stuff until you like, you know, 50 or 60. Now, brothers, you know, like in, in the early 30s, sometimes late 20s is experiencing this stuff. Man. Right, right, right. You know, so there's something definitely going on, and that definitely was an interesting connection, as well as everything that we're talking about tonight is showing um, to, um, the perversion of these particular rituals in which that is being done by not just the Christians or the Satanists or the Jews, um, or right. Muslims, but also showing um, how everybody had this thing wrong, you know, um, you know, and when the only thing that they really have to do if they have sufficient amount of melanin is to practice Qigong, Tai Chi, or Reiki, or Pranic Healing, or any one of those universal life force energy modalities, because that energy right. is a, that's abundant. That's universal energy. It's everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Okay. As compared to having to sacrifice a human being who isn't abundant, you know what I'm saying, right. which is limited, you know, and the life is precious, and but lives so many years, so why sacrifice? It just doesn't make sense. Why sacrifice an animal life? Right. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. Exactly. So, you know, all that because um, the ones who are in power today, um, who doesn't have sufficient amount of melanin, and um, they are the ones who don't have sufficient amount of melanin are the ones who are the easiest in order to inhibit by these demonic spirits, you know, in which right. that, you know, David, I call them reptilians. But he basically talking about that um, these entities are activated through the reptilian portion of the brain in which that, um, controls the first and second chakra, which is lust and greed. And these entities are in that um, capacity, they work in that capacity through the individual, act as a walk-in wow. or act as um, a perfectly possessed individual or person. You know, and that's what right. we continue with. As it says um, in the scriptures, you know, we don't battle against the princi- um, we don't battle against the flesh, but the principality of darkness. That's so that's right. Right, Would right. Would you but, say... Um, would you would you say that because like you know, I'm referring to this in the scripture about this uh, whole particular so called covenant between uh, the Creator and the Israelites? Um, uh, would you say that there's no real grounded truth to that, or, or would you say that it's like a, a form of long term planning for those who have rewritten the scripts? Exactly. It is um, definitely a um, long term planning in which that. Um, they want us to sacrifice to their gods, you know, and right. which that has certain aspects or energies of the human body. And well, some of this stuff never really even existed, right? Right, and there's certain thought forms. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Just like Serapis, that was created during the um, Nicene Council, which was part of um, right. Osar and um, Apis, which symbolizes the um, the sun bowl, you know, or the bowl right. of the sun. Right. Um, which is actually talking about the um, sun in the um, in the age of Taurus. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. right. What they did was make that a thought form and then gave an image to it, which was white Jesus, in order to have the world worship it, and then referred to it as wow. the lamb, symbolic to um, the age of Aries, which comes before Taurus, in which that was 2,000 years ago, actually from 4,000 years to 2,000 years ago, and now um, his symbol becomes the fish, which was um, from 2,000 years ago to just recently, and now the symbol becomes man. The age of Aquarius. Right, the age of Aquarius. You know, so right. this is what is going on. You know, so, I mean, when we look at it, we have to examine everything, everything, you know. Wow. Um, whether it's wow. Um, wow. As below, as within, so without, we have to make sure that we use that supreme axiom. Right. Wow. All right. No doubt. All right. Thanks, Doc. Yeah, thank you. All right, peace. Let's go to the next caller. 
804. Area code 804, you're on the line. Peace, peace, uh, brother Ali. Look, go to alexanderbackman.com. They not only got us eating ourselves, they got us drinking ourselves, too. They taking aborted fetuses, grinding mm-hmm. it up in powder form, and it's all in the bottle water. This and everything that we drink. Uh, yeah, well, they want to make cannibals because what happened is, is that what was being cannibalistic because what is being said is that if you go in and actually do some research on DNA, you will find that Africans and African Americans um, do not have the Neanderthal gene. And the Neanderthal are Europeans, and they was cannibalists. Exactly. And, so and, and, hold, and, right, so in order to hold their composition, their physical composition together, they have to um, drink blood. They have to um, do these types of things, these types of sacrifices, these types of um, rituals as far as um, having it in the water, having it as the food to eat, and all types of things. You know, so that's the that's what we're dealing with. But we, as those who do not have the Neanderthal gene, do not need it because we are the gods who came here, you know what I'm saying, and actually who formed them into existence using Neanderthal or what is known as the Yeti or the Sasquatch, you know, which is also referred to as the um, the um, chimpanzee monkey, you know what I'm saying, um, genes and enzymes in order to um, form them, you know, um, within that test tube or in that laboratory. If you get the book on medical by Walter Scott, he said the worst, um, the Egyptians said the worst thing that we have ever done was create man in our image and after our likeness. Now, if that doesn't sound like the um, Genesis, the first, second chapter, I don't know what does. And, and look, brother, I would like for you to have Walter Williams on your show. Cause I like oh, yeah. I like his work too, and see, oh, yeah, and I no. feel y'all oh, uh, uh, say again. No doubt, we definitely would get him. And, and see, and see, and I believe when y'all two brothers get together, man, that really gonna be a good feel of that. And and and, and look, uh, 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 Jeffrey Dahmer, that white boy was into a, a ritual called splash homage, where you count the organs and you eat the uh, the uh, the favorite number or something. That's why they mm-hmm. throw him to the woods. They throw they throw him to the woods. But That's right. uh, go to Alexander Backman and look at that good piece. It's called Can a Baby, a uh, Family Fetus is Food. And see, it's all in the cane uh, 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 foods. Uh, 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 Campbell is really big on it. But right. you can build on this piece here once you look at that. And I got another recording for uh, um, uh, Alexander Backman. The white boy is bad. Hmm. Um, all right, all right. Well, if you want to, you can actually um, 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 actually speak on it. If you have the website pulled up and you find something interesting, just come on on come on back and um, talk about it. You know. Oh look, the, what, you going over or or you can cut off at the, at the same at, at, at uh, uh, eight minutes, whatever we got left. Do whatever we can do, whatever. I mean, we got another hour if we want to continue on, or either we okay. can cut off. You know, if okay, you well, look, let me let go ahead on and let me find this, you know, go into the archives and, and uh, pull this thing up. All right, no doubt. And um, come on back. I will and, hit um, one. Right, and hit one. And uh, that's why uh, all time was in dementia is real high. And all these drinks, they they DNA damages. Mm-hmm. But, right. brother, please, but please try to get uh, Walter Williams on it and see that Bible, like you spoke of, Serapis, we know about Moses being Mamona Dean and uh, uh, Dizadad Erasmus. Right. Brother, I like Walter. Try to get him on the show because what Not you know much. and what he researched, it would be good information for the family. All right, no doubt. I sure will. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this on up and I'm going to punch one when I'm ready. All right, any particular subject that you want um, um, him to um, teach on? Matter of fact, I'll try to get him for next week if it's possible. Um, any subject you want him to um, teach on? Yes, yes. Uh, 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 how the whole Bible is a myth. How they, how they yeah. uh, uh, cook up these names and, and, and uh, bring them into reality. Like Paul never existed. Uh, right. uh, 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 was Joseph was never existed. Uh, uh, Mesopotamia. Uh, Samaria, all that stuff is a myth. Right. Uh, now, you uh, go back, you know, if you listen to um, my last um, three shows um, um, for the last
last three weeks, we actually went over the major world religions um, metaphysically decoded, and we said I went over a lot of that information too. Um, oh. If you go to um, um, religion metaphysically decoded, um, decoded and world major religions metaphysically decoded, go back to the archives, and I talk about a lot of that stuff, and I actually break down where the Bible comes from each book and who um, made them. Okay. And, and see, dumb two books, the Bible and the Quran, that religion is the worst spell amongst us. Exactly. That's why we can't move on. That's and right. I believe that all the Negroes that are teaching out of them books, they are agents. It's just something inside my gut feeling that, that them Negroes is agents. Well, I definitely agree that it's definitely going on. That is in culture, especially when um, at one time when individuals say that, um, that they're saying the same thing that you were saying, and then all of a sudden they come back and try to use the Bible um, as something in which that um, they abide by holy, as if it doesn't have any allegorial, um, allegories or metaphysical implications in it. So I have to question that too. You know, when they start trying to take it as a historical and literal book, you know, but exactly. when, you know, when when they, they at one time they didn't even believe it. You know, and they were using the words, they were using oh, the words of Walt Williams. They're using the works of Chick Atadia. They're using the works of John G. Jackson. They're using the works of um, Dr. Ben Yachin. They're using the works of um, Chancellor Williams. They're using the works of um, John Henry Clark. You know what I'm saying? They're using my work. They're using all of these people's works. You know, Phil Valentine, Bobby Emmett. And then all of a sudden, staunch Bible thumpers once again. So, yeah, I definitely have to question that. You're definitely right. So come on back and I'll pull up that site and come on back and we'll continue finishing up with um, Sister Nancy and see what she had to say about all of this. And then right. um, we'll come on back in with some of that information because we, we want everything recorded. You know what I'm saying? One more small thing me. before I leave. One more small thing. And you know, yeah. Brother Eileen, all of this is a, is a conspiracy against Luxor. Remember I told you I went there? Uh, I've yeah. been over there for eight months. And that's yeah. where I started getting my hunches and my gut feelings from. All, it, it, they trying to distract us from Luxor. Right. We the descendants no. of them people. No doubt. Karnak, you know, and what I said is that they're trying to keep us from our own original teaching. But yet they can use it in order to deceive the world with it. But I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and uh back up and uh, try to find this uh uh, uh archives up, you know, this thing up in the archives for the family tonight, all right? All right, well take down your um your question right quick and then bring your question back up so I can see your hand, okay? Okay, but you know, but once y'all get to get this mainly, you know, about you know how the how everything in the Bible is a myth, how all the archives of the Bible is a myth. Don't so none of them people exist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly and what see, I think. And, and see, and once y'all two brothers get together, you know, y'all, you know, y'all going in anyway. You know, all the bases gonna get covered anyway. Right. You know, so, it, 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 you know, it ain't no particular question, that, you know, that I want to raise. That's, that's y'all two brothers get together, because I know y'all going to try to help that. Oh, yeah, no doubt. So we're going to try to do that. Um, so um, come on back and um, give, give me, um, get that information for the people. So come on back in. Get the, um, okay. The and get her thoughts. Peace, Doc. Come on back. All right. Sister Nancy, you there? Yes, I'm still here. All right, what you think? What you think going on here? You think they be getting info out to them? You think they learning something? Yeah, I think they learning something, but <laughs> they still don't know how bamboozled they be in because they the ones paying for <laughs> the housing of these psychos. Right, you're right. You're right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. But, um... <clears throat> So I'm going to uh, share just a little bit about, uh, you know, what we talked about, the, the tips I gave you beforehand, uh, which is basically, um, according to the Department of Justice, it costs American taxpayers $15 billion per year to house individuals with psychiatric disorders in jails and prisons. That means 300,000 incarcerated individuals with mental illnesses at a cost of fifty fifty thousand dollars per person annually, 
And uh, at the L.A. County jails, they spend $10 million per year on psychiatric medications alone. And of, uh, as of 2005, Ohio was treating 8,371 mentally ill prisoners, which cost about $67 million a year. And uh, <clears throat> from 1996 to 2001 in Oklahoma prison system, the number of prescriptions from psychiatric medications increased from 22,000 to over 40,000. And um, in Cuyahoga County Jail in Ohio, they spent $175,000 for um, Zyprexa alone, which is for people who have schizophrenia. And um, a major contributor to the cost is, of course, the... Um, that they are regularly arrested because of the failure of the mental health uh, community. And in 2008, it cost uh, Harris County Jail, which is in Houston, $87 million um, alone. So <clears throat> now people know where all their taxpayers' money is going to. <laughs> it's to have these... Um, <clears throat> These so-called psychopaths who I think um, <clears throat> through the medication are um, are having these uh, so-called mental illnesses. I don't think some of these people uh, are born or genetically all born with these mental illnesses. I think it's because of the medication that they are given that they start to have these um, mental illnesses. So you think it's being contrived um, through the industry. right, right? I think they know what they're doing when they put when they put these um, medications on the market. Mm. Interesting, interesting. Mm. Every other commercial is a medication. <laughs> now, if you notice, um, there's a pharmacy on every corner, almost on every block in the communities now. Whether it's um, right. CVS, whether it's um, you know uh, Walgreens, Walmart, um, what's some of the other ones? You know, I mean they're everywhere. I mean they're right, just they. as, <laughs> and they right. They're just as plentiful as um, almost churches and liquor stores now. Mhm. So. But um, that's all the information that I had. Mm, well, I mean that's 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 plenty. That's that's plenty. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, you know. Um, you know what is going on, and we haven't to right. speak out about it, you know. And I mean, not just from human trafficking, from the missing persons. Wondering what happens with the missing person because I know, like during Katrina, during the Katrina disaster, um, the, fr the final call on the Minister Farrakhan specifically stated that there was over twenty five hundred children that was never found, and no one has never questioned that. No, I believe it because now they now they decide to have a show on uh, TV One about missing black kids, <laughs> like. That's the oldest. That's been going on for so long. Now all of a sudden they want to have a show showing all these black kids missing. Exactly. You know, so, I mean, it's there's a lot of um, things going on. Um, we want to see if the brother is um, prepared and bring him back on. See if you got anything else with us. 804, brother, you back? I'm still, I'm still searching. I'm still searching real quick. All right, all right. Come on. When you get it, um, um, definitely um, come on in and um, chime in, and um, you know we can begin to um, finish this on up. You know we're going to try to um, continue on with some more statistics here, and not just statistics, but I mean just common sense things. You know, right. um, we see that this is at the elite level. Um, the highest politicians stemming from out of um, Washington D.C throughout the various states. Like you said, North Carolina, you know, is eighth in human trafficking.
second, and like I said, 48 in education. You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> come on. You know. Yeah. Um, I mean, so this is just, when we go back and analyze what is going on, the dumbing down of America is essential to um, the elite survival, you know, and them maintaining control over the populace and over the masses. You know, they have to keep us dumbed down. They don't want intelligent people, thinking people, for them, you know. And so these are all ways in order to dumb us down, whether it's the fluoride, the aluminum, whether it's the um, human body parts, you know, obviously disease, you know, I would say disease, um, whether it's the vaccines, which is disease. And when you look up vaccines, ingredients, and fillers, you can see that it has formaldehyde, which is embalming fluid in it, someone else's snot, someone else's um, cells, such as cancer cells of Henrietta Lacks, which is the primary base for the vaccines. All of the vaccines. A black woman from 1950 who had cervical cancer. Um, also, somebody else's shit is in vaccines. Somebody else's urine, piss, is in vaccines. And they inoculate us with this. You know, and wonder why um, the black males have such a high mortality rate. And um, and not just just those things that add to it, just add on to the fact of being able to get these particular um, drugs from out of our system, you know, based on um, things that we should be in and doing. One of the major things is alkaline water, herbs, alkaline electrical foods, particular herbs, cleansing herbs, you know, such as um, burdock. Yellow dock, red clover, you know, black walnut, alfalfa, chaparral, garlic, myrrh. You know, these um, herbs help cleanse the um, the muscles, the tissues, and the various organs and glands and create hormonal balance. You know, um, how to protect ourselves from these um from the human traffickers and pedophiles, like we said earlier, make sure that um, you keep um, an eye on your children. You know, when they're with you, make sure they're with you and not um, running off somewhere else. You know, keep up with them. <laughs> you know, um, I remember. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, I remember um, when we had our store, and we had our store, our bookstore, in which that we sold Afrocentric um, books. Um, a lot of the books that we may mention up tonight, or a lot of the authors that we may mention up tonight, and a and my son was outside playing, and I went outside, and my wife came behind me, and we went outside together, and we seen this white guy come by, and he's an old white guy, and he's like, oh, "Is that your son? Oh, he's so beautiful." So we already knew what was up. He was one of them pedophiles, you know what I'm saying? One of these satanic cats right. who goes into the um, the hood and attempt to kidnap and get children and sleep with them in order to, or either sacrifice them in order to steal their energy to become a soul snatcher, you know, or spirit snatcher, I should say, because they don't have a soul. They can't generate a soul because they don't have an emotional body. This is the this is the problem with a psychopath. They don't have emotional bodies. This is why they can't feel the way that we can as human beings, as the gods and goddesses of this planet. They don't have sympathy. They don't know mercy, love, right. All they can illustrate and demonstrate is lust, lewdness, murder, maim, slander, killing. These are the attributes, and those are attributes of the lower self, of the devil, you know, of your double, your lower nature. You know, so these are the things in which that is taking place and going on. You know, um, you have something to um to add to it, Nancy. Uh, I was reading stuff in the chat room. Um, no, I, oh, oh, I was gonna. Oh, I was gonna say, crap. <laughs> no, if it come back to me, I will then. No, well, what you read? Yeah, what you read? Oh yeah, yeah, there you go, right there. Oh, okay. Yes. Hey, look, I couldn't find the one I want, but I'm going to play this one right here, all right? All right. All right. Here I go. 
give him a cup of something. It's, 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 it's rolling now. Okay. And, yes, Harrietta Lack um, is her name. And we're talking about her um, cervical um, cancer cells is used as the prime or the base for all um, for all um, 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 vaccines. And the word pharmaceutical comes from word pharmacopia. I got it now. I got it now. Yeah, pharmacopia, which means sorcerers. But really, they're not sorcerers because they don't really tie themselves back to the source. They're independent of the source, you know. So we got to get those names right, too. Hey, our brother Lee. Be ready, you Hit it up. I am ready. I'm rolling now. Yeah. Alexander Bachman has a story. Yeah. Had the story for some time. We have the story to become public. So is it me? Alexander, could it be? In fact, we are defiling the temple that God created for us. We are eating ourselves. And through ignorance, which is not bliss at all, through ignorance itself, people are ingesting aborted babies inside industrialized products. It's grave in nature to just think about the process of eating another human being, but to do it stealthily through a silent war mechanism such as the one that the owner of PepsiCo has started around uh, against the population of the world, you know, continuing the Satanism to a mass extreme where the... It is Satanism. Oh, it is, absolutely. I expect to be, you know, like the Republican Party of the guys that uh, are vying for president of the United States are saying, well, we must not discuss 911, let's not discuss the... Death bus overhead. Let's not discuss the murder meters. Just let the chips fall where they may. Let's not bother about the, these small details. We're talking about aborted babies by the millions being dried and ground up and put into the juices of the Ukraine. Oh, the sodas. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we have Pepsi uh, doing this all over the board. We have uh, Sanomix, which is a very important company uh, out of La Jolla, California, uh, receiving money from transnational companies such as Nestle, Pepsi, Campbell's, Frito-Lay, Frito-Lay, all these brands that PepsiCo controls. Lay chips. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. You got your Lay chips, and everything that Lay chips has has this and so a dead baby. You know, the other day I was at Subway and I confronted the clerk yeah. on this matter. I told him, all your products are minute made, Pepsi, Lay's, and all of them say natural flavors. These natural flavors are directly put into the product as flavor enhancers by Cenomates, whom is paid paid millions of dollars for a year for their research by Pepsi, by Kraft, by Campbell's Well, They just cut out, got out of the deal because of the bad publicity for their soups. Well, you know something? We're going to give them some publicity. Some free publicity. Free. Free. Oh, boy. I'm actually going to give free publicity on Paradox Ship TV. We're going to give you a nice big front page. We're going to tell the world. We're going to explain what they drink. Oh, they thought about it. They might change their mind. This may be good for your business. There are madmen amongst us and zombies. And zombies certainly uh, the greenies. So the greenies, they go and it's all good stuff. And that Monsanto... Monsanto makes bonds too. Yeah. Well, you say this is an aborted baby yeah, at 36 weeks of age. 36. Which is trying to quite well, right? Yeah, Seven makes this web page if you want to go. How do you spell Seven? It's S E N O M I A Y X. S E N O. And in Y-S. Their offices are in La Jolla. It's uh, 11 
0099 North Torrey Pines Road, La Jolla, California, 
Yeah, they have. They can be strong guns. The, the, the prime minister says he's strong. Right? He doesn't complain. The president doesn't say right? he doesn't do anything. For them, it's just a game. So you read the short story transcripts of it. Oh, here's here's a quarter. Yeah, God we trust. That's what America has become. They trust in God while um, all these pieces let the pieces fall where they may. Hey, Dr. Lee. Yes, yes. Now, peep this out. When Obama got in the chair, right, the first right. law he put on the books is that a black woman can walk in the in the, in the, in the, in the uh, facility nine months pregnant and still get the job done. That's right. Yeah. But, look, yeah. I got to go. I got to go pick my wife up and everything. All right. Well, thank you for that. And um, y'all heard it, you know. Um, we gave you a lot of information tonight. Do your research, find out what's going on, you know, because um, you're eating. Our, we eating others, you know. We are being cannibalistic, you know, and um, it's part of the missing persons. It's part of the human trafficking, as well as also um, the energies in which that they are trying to tap into is being contrived through um, the sexual act, um, sex slaves, through oppression, through abuse as well as also after they finish with them, you know, sacrificing. You know, so this is all going on. And um, as we heard um, Abe um, Finkelstein say, um, who's a rabbi, a uh, Zionist, he stated that um, what they do with the bodies, well, they just drink the blood. That's what the Jews do. And the bodies, you know, they get ground up into meat and get um, served, you know, at McDonald's. You eat it. You know, as well as you heard, um, the you know, the guy who, just finished um, being played, you know, um, state that not only are you eating it, but you're drinking it too. It uses flavor, flavoring in many of the foods and sodas and drinks, you know, um, that we actually ingest. You know, so thank you, Ock. Um, Sister Nancy, you got um, anything that you want to um, add to that? Um, not at all. Y'all nipped it in the butt. <laughs> All right, all right. All right, so we appreciate you coming on, giving us some real info. Um, there's another um, website, too, um, that's been put up, um, IFF International Foods and Flavoring. That's what it is. IFF is International Food and Flavoring. They're responsible for a lot of the chemicals in the so-called foods as flavors. So you go to um, www.iff.com, right, slash, And you can check that out in order to see um, what um, the guy was talking about. And um, you can go back and listen to this and get his name and get more information. Um, we appreciate you um, sticking in with us and we getting ready to be out. All right? Hey. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start.
start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intentions straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages for us to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.